Hello everyone. On behalf of Harbinger, a warm welcome to the webinar. The topic for today is MVP Essentials, the Building Blocks and the Best Practices. Thanks for joining. My name is Saru and I am your host for today. Let's wait for a few seconds as we see more participants joining in. Till then, let's do quick housekeeping checks. If you can hear me clearly, please type yes in the chat box window. Okay, I see a couple of yes. Fine, so we are all ready for the webinar. Today's webinar recording will be available for all the attendees. You can ask the questions anytime in the session using the question tab on the right hand side of the screen. We will be answering the questions at the end. If we don't happen to get time to answer all, we'll make sure that we follow up with you afterwards and also share the webinar Q&A document. Without further ado, I'm delighted to welcome you to the webinar. Our speaker for today is my colleague Prachi Kulkarni. Prachi is a general manager of technology solutions at Harbinger. He brings in around 20 years of experience in project delivery, pre-sales and project uh, proposal engineering roles. Welcome Prachi. Hi, hello Saru. Thank you uh, for inviting me here. Hello everyone. Great. And I'm Saru, your host and I head the marketing function at Harbinger Systems. So let's get started with the webinar. The goal of a startup is to figure out the right thing, to build the thing that customers want and will pay for as quickly as possible. In the words of Eric Riaz, the lead, leading, uh, leading uh, author in the pioneer in the lean startup strategy. We'll run through the agenda first. So we'll start with the strategy behind a minimum viable product creation. We'll move on to the key factors, the techniques in building an MVP. We'll cover the technical as well as the business factors. In the best practices, we'll talk about the industry best practices and then move on to case study showcasing how Harbinger has helped customers build great products in shortest time to market. This will be followed by a special offer for webinar attendees. Great. And then the question and answers. Okay. So Prati, first things first, we would want to know what is, what is a minimum viable product? Okay. So Saru, uh, let me give you an example. There is a nice picture here. As you can see, the picture in the right hand corner is of a cruise ship. It's a five star hotel on water, if you will. It has so many amenities. It's a huge, big ship uh, catered, catering to so many people. I mean, it's a nice experience just being there on the ship. I treat that as my final product. Whereas the left top is a small ship. Uh, that's a promise, so to say, of the big ship. It does not have all the features. But it will tell you that uh, what is there, or the plan for the future, is something which is very good. Okay. And obviously the basic functionality that is sailing on water is there. And the promise of comfort is also there. That's exactly what a MVP, a minimum viable product, will be there uh, for the final product. I see. Okay? So if you think about a minimum viable product, it can be a product with minimum minimal set of features uh, it essentially if you think about the uh, MVP let's go with the types first then I'll be able to explain that sure. so it is a small version of the product it can be a landing page or a video also at times but I will for this uh, current discussion talk about the smaller version of the product when you think of a small product version uh, first thing that comes to mind is the features there can be the essential features. So say for example, if you're looking at a portal, then the user registration, the, the access to the features, the typical workflows, the reports are the essential features. 
but you also need to have the differentiating features. If you think about the ship on the last screen, it sails in the water, yes, that's the essential feature, but the promise of comfort is the differentiating feature. So your minimum viable product should have both these types of features in it. Next thing that you should consider is the target audience. Now if you are looking at a huge big portal, typically there are multiple types of users that you are going to cater to. For example, if I look at an e-learning portal, it can be for K-12 students, it can be for a district with multiple schools, it can be for a corporate portal, it can be for an enterprise portal. But when you are looking at MVP, you should look at a small subset of audience, target audience, for which you are going to design the MVP. I see. And then the next thing is you should have a feedback mechanism because you want to hear back from the audience as to how your MVP is there, how it is faring. So once you look at all these, the minimum set of features, the target audience and the feedback, you are kind of ready. Those are the basic building blocks of an MVP. So an MVP is a functional product and it's possibly not as lavish as a cruiser. So the, the question which comes in mind is why do we need an MVP? Why don't we just build a functional full-fledged product and move on? Well, that's an excellent question in fact, Saru and uh, Eric Riaz has explained it a lot in his Lean Startup. Uh, so MVP came into mind for typically for startups. Please note that it is not limited to startups, it can be for enterprises also. But when I am uh, there with a startup mentality, usually what is there first is the product idea. Now what I want is I, a validation of that idea. I know that there are so many other techniques like market research and all for the validation. In fact, a little bit of market research is going to be there even for the MVP. But the best way to get the idea validated is build something for it and showcase it to users. So that is my idea validation. Next comes implementation validation. Okay, I have a very good idea, but maybe the implementation is not that great. I'll give you an example. Uh, supposing the product idea is for a quicker, uh, for application of quick communication between doctors and patients. And the implementation is such that the patient will have to go through multiple screens and click so many times and there are feedbacks and there are, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, words that you need to type in. That's, that idea is not going to fly because the basic premise between doctor and patient communication is that it should be quick, you know. So the validation of idea implementation, whether the users are receiving the idea the way you are doing is one need. Next, when you look at the startups, all the startups have budget constraints, okay? So again, going to the example of that ship, if you start building a big, huge cruise ship, it is going to cost you a lot. And right now, you don't know whether users are really looking for that type of cruise ship. So you don't want to put a lot of money, time, effort in that. So how do you do that? You look at a subset of features. That essentially means you are going to prioritize. In any startup, in any idea, there are multiple stakeholders and all the stakeholders want multiple features. So first you need to sit together uh, with the stakeholders and find out what exactly are you going to implement. And please make sure that you have a cohesive set of features. That essentially is what we do when we prioritize. With that, because it is limited budget, because it is limited set of features and because it is for a targeted audience, this results into risk minimization. Essentially the money and the effort that I'm putting is small so I can afford to take a risk. Why? Because if at all it comes out that my idea is not valid, I'm going to fail, let's do that quickly. Or even if the idea is valid, say, my implementation is not right or maybe I need some more features so I can get that feedback, get that learning from it and move ahead considering all this. So this is what essentially uh, comes to mind when I look at a, a, a huge big portal. Can I start small? And that's a MVP. Great. Uh, obviously all this is done for a goal and usually for startups the target audience is the VCs. So uh, I will tell you how to build this and the best practices and all but this is also the dollar number and the target audience is something that you should keep in mind. Uh, again, like it says here, a large 
part of startup success is based on its ability to test its target market. That's what we are doing. Why? Because you want to validate the ideas and showcase the business's potential. Awesome. So uh, if, if I think from a startup point of view, startup would have a great idea, would want to have the first mover advantage, possibly, you know, in the shortest time to market, we want to roll out the MVP. And as you rightly said, there could be potentially budget constraints as well. So from your experience, can you indicate some factors which can come handy for a startup when they plan ahead for an MVP creation? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. In fact, you look at the key factors, there are two types of factors, the business factors and the technology factors. So just uh, let's look at the business factors first. Your MVP, in fact, your product has to be aligned to the market need. Like I said, the market needs to be ready for something. If I give a hypothetical example, there was a time when the wearable devices were not there or the mobile devices were not there. So if I'm looking at something instantaneous there, then probably the idea was not going to fly. Okay. But, but in current market near, maybe the wearable is something that you should look for. So obviously all this is there, uh, market research is done uh, for this thing and then you come up with idea and by the time you are going for an MVP, you are kind of 30-40% sure that it is aligned for the market need. Next thing is the uh, target audience mindset. I said that the target audience should be a small subset of the number of users or type of users that you are intending to. But then you should also know age, the mindset of those target users. I'll give you an example. For example, if there is an e-learning portal, many times it happens that the target audience that I am looking at uh, ends up looking at the content instead of the portal. Okay? okay. So if you don't design the portal, if you don't set the expectations right, then the feedback uh, for the target audience that they are going to provide you is not going to be something that you are looking for. So definitely you should have something uh, with the target audience in mind. Next thing will be the review and assessment parameters. Again going there, if I'm looking for feedback on portal, I should uh, set the expectation that I'm looking for feedback on portal. Again, uh, if, I, if my target audience is say a VC, then the VC uh, people, they are so used to looking at various implementation of ideas then maybe you are not, uh, it's okay if you have some uh, corners uh, there in your implementation. But if it is a common person, if it is a standard user who is going to implement your idea, then your user experience should be great, your usability should be very great. Otherwise, you are going to end up getting comments on your user experience, which is also very valuable, sure. but not so much on your functionality. Okay, and then you should consider the marketing plan because even though it is an MVP, there should be a way, clear way to uh, deploy that or make that available to all those users. Usually how we do this is we target it for a particular event. Maybe there is a healthcare event or an e-learning event and then you showcase your product considering that event. So uh, all these business factors you should definitely consider. But prior to that, the most important thing is you should think, do you really need an MVP? I see. Uh, I will uh, give you an example here. For example, if it is a mobile application, many times it so happens that if it is out there on the store and if it is a MVP, it is a small scale version of the application, it is something which is not necessarily half baked but not complete. And then the users who are going to go for that mobile application don't get the proper user experience and your uh, cause will be hampered if you showcase the MVP there. So maybe you don't need it. Right? So definitely you should think about whether you need the mobile application, uh, the uh, minimum viable product for your particular need. Sure. Uh, looking at the technological factors, uh, I talked about essential and differentiating features. It definitely has to have differentiating features because otherwise the users are not going to like that. The next thing that you should look at is the feasibility. The market uh, feasibility, uh, we talked about the market research and market need, the implementation feasibility. For example, there are some ideas, uh, usually I see clients who want uh, uh, mobile applications on iOS as well as Android, but as you know, Apple is very uh, uh, selective, you know. There are certain things that don't work on iOS and they maybe they work on jailbroken devices, but we don't want that. We are not going to cater to that. 
So the implementation feasibility or the design feasibility is something that you should definitely look at when you are looking at an MVP. And you should not uh, promise or build your product on something which is maybe going to be releasing in next year. Okay, I see. So that's something. And then the implementation platform. Uh, since it is startups, we are usually dealing with open source and even for MVP, the platform can be open source. The cloud provider can be the minimum thing. Uh, the uh, CMSs or LMSs that you are going to use are going to be open source. However, if your final product is going to be, say, on .NET, then I would recommend that you build your MVP also on .NET. It is a bad idea to build MVP on something else and then building the final product on something else. Okay. And then uh, uh, I talked about the attractive user interface and user experience because obviously for the common man, but even for very professional and experienced users, we go first by how it looks. Look at the Japanese food. It looks good and then we go for the taste. You know? Very right. So similarly, uh, the attractive UI and attractive user experience is a must in anything. Right. Okay. And then the coupled, tightly coupled feedback loop. The whole idea behind MVP is hearing back from users how they feel about it. So once you uh, decide on the parameters in the business factors, what feedback are you looking for? You should also look at the mechanism of how the user is going to feed, uh, provide the feedback. It can be surveys, it can be some uh, questions, it can be those five star uh, widgets. All that uh, uh, which will let the user have an ability to provide you feedback and then maybe maybe you can ask the starred feedback and if it is three and up, you can ask for a good comment or that kind of a thing, you know. So or maybe even the bad comment or if you will. So uh, all these things have to be there in the MVP. Great. So these factors are helpful. What we would want to know uh, further is, what are the building blocks in an MVP model? Are there some steps that one needs to follow? Uh, yes, definitely. Like I said, uh, MVP is a small version of a product. So definitely you're going to build the product. But the basic idea behind MVP, basic idea behind a product is showcasing the functionality. But basic idea, idea behind MVP is showcase the functionality so that you can have uh, measure the uh, feedback and then learn from it. So if I'm looking at the building of the product, obviously I start with the ideation. Again, uh, similar to product, MVP has to have market research. I talked about it a lot. You need to have the audience and then set launch objectives. Launch objectives are again the feedback parameters for which I'm going to look at. Maybe it is a price parameter. Maybe it is a functionality parameter. Maybe it is anything, right? So you should set those objectives. You should define the features that we talked about a lot. We should define the user experience uh, in cognizant uh, with the target audience mindset and deployment. Let me talk a bit about the deployment. If you're going for a iOS, then iOS does not let you uh, share private builds. It has to have, uh, the application has to be there out on the store. So when you are looking for an MVP for iOS, you should keep that in mind. Or maybe if it is a private, uh, maybe it is something that you are crowdsourcing in an event. So then you should look at how you are going to present that to your end users or to your targeted users. So all these factors should be considered when you are building it. Once you have built the product and you have showcased it, uh, obviously you have built so many feedback channels there. Uh, the feedback is going to come in. You need to assess the feedback against the launch objectives. So if at all, unfortunately for you, you are looking for a e-learning portal feedback and people are going giving you feedback on content, then a bad okay. idea and it sure. doesn't help yeah. you a lot. So getting the right <laughs> feedback is something that you should have. You have assessed it. And now you're learning from it. Um, God forbid your idea is good, your idea is valid. Still, there are so many positive and negative feedbacks coming in. You should look at all those things. You should look at the features. You should adjust the product roadmap for the bigger picture, bigger product, and then continue iterative development because MVP is something that you can build on top. You know, you can use the same source code and build, try building it for the final portal version. So that's how I see your MVP getting built. Thanks, Prati. This is very helpful. I'm sure this will be of assistance for any startup to plan out the building blocks. We would want to know more on from your experience, from the organization experience, what are the good practices which one should follow, abide, keep in mind to when building an MVP? Okay. 
So, uh, yeah, definitely. And like all best practices, when I start uh, talking about best practices, they seem like common sense. But believe me, uh, <laughs> usually it happens that people don't follow this. Okay, first things first, it is a minimum viable product. So there is always a fight whether it, I should go for minimum features or I should go for a viable application. Okay. And I would definitely tell you that it has to be viable. You should urge towards that. Okay. Because many times it so happens that I'm cutting the features, I'm cutting the features, but the, then the user experience is not cohesive. It's not a complete user experience for any kind of audience, you know. So if at all I am in a dilemma whether I should cut a feature or not, I should look at the overall user experience and go for viable. That's the first thing. Uh, balance between correct product definition and time to market. Again, this is one classic flight. Now, it is there uh, for the final product, it is there for the MVP. I have a deadline and then I need to define the feature. Uh, many times it comes to how you implement the feature, whether I implement it completely, whether I don't implement it completely. Again, the cohesiveness is there, but even within that, you should have the correct product definition. What do you want to put in front of the users? If your uh, uh, cutting features is uh, hampering you there, then no, no. Next, I would like to see uh, that uh, the assumptions, the launch objectives essentially, the assumptions that you have made while building the product and the target, uh, target audience, uh, get a third person's feedback whether all this is holistic. Because many times it so happens that people start building something, people start changing features, people, st whatever, uh, I mean, you are saying that you're not going to change fe features, but that's a fact that many times it happens. And then this holistic thinking is lost in all this. You know, the next thing is, uh, usually it is a good idea to validate through crowdsourcing because that way you get a good feedback. Rather than out, uh, putting it out on uh, the app store or something, I would rather validate it through crowdsourcing. And then feedback should be designed to encourage uh, descriptive comments. Say for example, uh, like I said, there can be a feedback widget, but you can ask users to give feedback if they have liked your project. So maybe a uh, feedback of five stars will ask the user for a comment. Feedback for one star also will ask the user for a comment. comment. Okay, you know, that kind of a thing. Going further, uh, definitely feature creep should be discouraged. Again, it uh, uh, hampers the cohesiveness of the product. And multiple stakeholders, this happens. So you have to be firm and say no to any type of feature creep without valid reason. Very true. Uh, going further, there are some benchmarks for uh, how much time and how much cost. So you know, so if at all your implementation of MVP is going to take more than 1.5 calendar months, or if it is going to take more than around 10 to 20k US dollars, then something is wrong. And again, you don't have to spend $10,000 or you don't have to work for 1.5, but that's the usual benchmark of how and where the MVPs will come. Okay. Okay. Um, the marketing techniques have to be there. I mean, even if I'm launching it at an event, you need to advertise it, you need to send emails, you need to do the, a, a, a little bit of basic campaigning or at least try to find out how many users are going to be there and all that. So those efforts need to be there even for an MVP. And uh, definitely you should not compromise on UI or product quality and UI is first, please note, uh, and in pro uh, before product quality because uh, uh, let's face it in MVP since we are, I'm restricting the features, there is some hard coding. But okay, but still the UI has to look nice. And please remember that this is not a proof of concept. Proof of concept can be something where I'm just proofing the concept and the, I don't look at the UI, I don't look at uh, what data is coming in and all that, you know. Okay. MVP is a smaller version of the product. It is not a POC. And then uh, going ahead, MVP has to be agile because I'm going to build on top of that MVP. And uh, the agility and uh, the overall product or, or the uh, building map of this MVP has to has to have that agile factor in it. And last but not least, every product dream cannot be translated into an MVP. For example, if you have a product uh, which is going to work in say uh, operation theater for a hospital, you're not going to be able to build an MVP for that. So please note the way every dream cannot be a product. Every product dream cannot be a an MVP. I see. Okay. So, how the, uh, the question which comes to mind is that how is an MVP different from a functional full-fledged product? So, 
so uh, if I want to first like I like it is written here it needs to be a promise of the final product but if I want to look at how uh, a product is different or how I make a MVP into a product my MVP was essential plus differentiating features now in my product there are going to be nice to have features okay? I see. obviously the overall feature set is going to be uh, more much more than the MVP but in MVP I usually do not have nice to have features here it will be nice to have features as well uh, barring certain products who are uh, meant for security uh, type of domains, in uh, all other MVPs we don't look a lot at security and performance. However, in my final product these two considerations are a must. Even uh, the deployment, the hardware, hardware configuration should be such that it is considering the user load. It is definitely considering the sensitive data and all that and all these considerations are a must. The marketing efforts need to be much more higher. The branding and the, uh, all such considerations have to be there. In addition, there are certain additional features which I use in a product to kind of make it popular. Maybe it is giving something free. Maybe it is something like a coupon. Maybe all such features which are not there in the MVP show up in the final product. And obviously, a product is not going to be, it is not going to be the end when you get the first version out. There has to be a further roadmap, future roadmap. Uh, where I'm uh, looking at a final product. This is awesome. So we talked about, we covered the building blocks. We talked about the best practices, the feature creep, implementation time window. We touched upon the cost factor. We also looked at the approximate timelines and what all would it take. And also having an insight on the marketing trends and the techniques. From your experience, could you throw some light on how Harbinger has built great MVPs for startups? Yeah, definitely. In fact, we have had quite a few uh, uh, interesting case studies. In fact, I talked about this wearable device case study a while back. It was a product uh, uh, where we wanted to have a communication between doctor and patient through wearable devices. And then the reason was uh, obviously validation of the idea and then how the customers find it and whether the market needs it. Okay. Now first uh, we started with uh, the target audience. Uh, even though it was doctors and patients, we said that we'll have a mix of some healthcare professionals and obviously some patients as the target audience. The next step was age group of the end users and we said that for this study we will target mostly the senior adults uh, as patients and obviously the health professionals uh, there was no age limit for that I see the next thing was the launch objectives indirect feedback on idea obviously how the users receive it is going to tell me how the idea uh, whether it was good or bad feedback on implementation and features yes definitely and then ease of use so uh, when uh, uh, I mean uh, I'll tell you on in my next slide that we targeted it for an event Okay. So the people were there standing there explaining the product and kind of we got to know from users how easy or difficult it is just looking at their action and how comfortable they were using the product, you know. So like I said, um, uh, we launched it at a particular event and then we got quite a very good feedback, you know. Uh, people like that application but we also got new feature requests for improvement. I'll give you an example. Uh, the communication was such that the patient could reach the doctor but we got a feedback saying if at all if I have a history maybe a short patient history um, some notes or maybe uh, my prior history of how uh, many times the patient has communicated with the doctor or something like that that is going to be help very helpful I know there are quite a few restrictions on giving the exact patient history and there are consents and all those security requirements but still some smaller version would make it very good and uh, uh, the client really appreciated this feedback. Interesting. The next thing that we got was this was designed for a certain type of communication but we were told that uh, especially in the urgent care or emergency scenarios this is going to be very useful and the senior citizens were uh, ready to point this out that yeah I am uh, always worried how I am going to reach the treatment even though it says urgent care so your application is going to help me a lot because the doctor is going to be ready for me by the time I go you know. So uh, in addition to all this we got a feedback on how many uh, uh, users use the wearable devices, which devices they prefer. That also told me about the technology choice, whether I am go uh, going with the right type of technology targeting right devices and obviously all in all a very successful MVP.
Great. So this looks amazing. A powerful variable and for a healthcare client. Great. Can you share with us one more example of a different case, different domain and how did Harbinger go ahead and create an MVP? Yeah, definitely. In fact, uh, this one is for a uh, non-ISV type of domain and uh, this was for targeting uh, marketing services for specific users. So the idea was uh, they had an existing system for which they are targeted, uh, the typical services were targeted for uh, a particular set of users. And then the users where uh, the user data was coming out of a third party uh, portrait service. Okay. So what they had, uh, the manual, existing manual service was uh, they used to massage the data and then uh, target uh, particular services, the campaigns on, and all that for those particular users. The client's need, I mean, uh, do we need the service? Yes. That service was essential because that was proven. Only thing is it was manual. Now the client wanted to know how to simplify that and how to automate that and uh, before he put in any money in simplifying an automation, whether it is going to um, uh, help him in reaching more users and all that, you know. So, I mean, uh, usually it is if you go from manual to automate, obviously uh, it is going to save time and it is going to reach the users, yes. But if he is going to put so much money, cost against the results is what is something that he wanted to validate. So, definitely as part of MVC, MVV process, we looked at the existing manual system. We just, uh, and then uh, we came to know that there are multiple stakeholders there. There are multiple portals. Uh, data, the data was sent for massaging to multiple entities. And then the uh, audience was people asking for services, yes. But audience was also people who were kind of uh, helping in massaging the data, you know. So we decided uh, that uh, definitely we need the idea, feedback on the idea and potential of improving user reach and all. But uh, to look at how uh, the various stakeholders are appreciating the application uh, uh, automation of the services, what we decided was rather than uh, converting the entire process, we'll convert a part of that process into automation. I see. And uh, that way, uh, for a small uh, number of users, uh, instead of multiple integrated portals, we had a certain number of integrations and limited number of users. and um, stakeholders for that particular integration and those users were our target users. Uh, definitely uh, feature decision was very crucial. Uh, differentiating features again was very crucial because if I want to automate, I would like the user to feel that this automation is giving me something more. Sure. You know, The end users are not going to realize that because the end users definitely are going to receive the targeted marketing similar in the same way the manual process were doing it. But what I wanted to target was how many users and how fast I was able to reach, you know. So that how fast is something was the, that was our launch objective. Um, again, the limited audience rather than the whole thing, even though the ultimate aim was a SaaS based portal, we said that let's do the MVP for a standalone kind of a thing. So all such decisions, uh, we uh, sat with the client, we made all this. And I know I have told you that uh, MVP should be a promise of the product. and. Finally, if I have, I'm looking at the SaaS based version, that was his dream. My standalone MVP was not exactly a promise of the product. But then the main aim behind this was uh, validating whether the automation is going to help me or not. And then if it helps, then he was going to go for the SaaS. So we looked at the first goal, that is whether the automation is going to help me or not. And looking at that goal, we decided on how many features to put in the MVP and how to do that. And obviously, uh, technological feasibility was very critical because the manual system, since it was manual, and then some legacy systems, uh, integration with those legacy systems, whether we want to invest money on that or whether you want to move the legacy systems to somewhere else. So all these uh, feasibility issues and the design was something which is very critical. But all in all, we managed that and the client got the feedback that yes, at so much, so much amount invested, he's going to improve his user, user reach by so much. And one added benefit was whatever the multiple stakeholders were there who were helping him kind of massage that data. They were also very happy with all these automation things because a lot of effort was getting saved for him. And all in all, it was a very successful MVP because it served its purpose. Excellent. 
Thanks, Rati, for the interesting insights. This is great. For the benefit of the audience, can you give us a, some high-level understanding on the differentiators of Harbinger? Excellent. So, uh, well, we are a world company. We have huge experience and we deal with multiple types of clients and startups yeah, are one of them. Years 25 of years of experience. Yeah, right. And we uh, work with startups. Okay. So, like I said in my last case study, we decide how to uh, best fit the current need. Be it a product or be it a MVP, we try and help you do that. You know. Uh, we tell you what should be the MVP, what should be the first release, what should be. In fact, I have had cases where my team has sat with the client's uh, business analyst and kind of uh, helped even in defining the product in their own way, you know. Okay. Or maybe uh, go, uh, making the first innovation for the ideas, first research for the ideas is what I, we have done. Then um, we are, uh, we have so many technology verticals and we have a huge, um, incubator team, big incubator team which supports us in uh, looking through all those cutting edge technologies and uh, co-ideation, I talked about it a uh, while back. We have a uh, <coughs> innovation factory team which helps the customers kind of thrash out their idea, define that idea and then go for the MVP. So all in all we are ready to give you an end to end solution, be it a product or be it a MVP. Great. So let Harbinger help you get it right the first time, every time. Great. So now we have come to the special offer for the webinar attendees. So what's the offer? We would offer two hours of free consultation from our product engineering experts to all the attendees who have invested time in the webinar today. Please come forward and discuss your MVP idea today. You can reach us at hsinfo at the rate harbingergroup.com to avail this exciting opportunity. Okay. Prachi, now we would want to move forward to the question and answers Definitely. section. And we see some questions coming up in the chat window. Just give me a minute. Okay. So here is the... So how does one ascertain that the MVP was successful? Or was it a failure? Okay. Um, Saru, uh, like I was talking, there are certain launch objectives that we have set. And then there is the feedback. Now, if you are looking at the feedback, you definitely know whether it is a misdirected feedback or no. Assuming it is not a misdirected feedback, then uh, looking at the feedback, you will know whether the MVP has served its purpose because launch objectives are aligned with your goal. Like in my last case study, the launch object objective was determining whether the user reach is going to be improved. If my MVP proves that yes, it is improved, then that is there. If it is about an idea, the healthcare uh, case study that I talked about, if there are people who are ready to come and use your uh, uh, variable application and then the comments that they give you is definitely going to tell you whether the MVP was successful or not. Uh, so basically measuring the feedback against the launch objectives and again tying all that to the goal of your product. Thanks, Prachi. Uh, this is the other question which is coming up. Um, and just for the benefit of all our attendees, in case we are not able to take up your questions in the session today, we will respond to you in a Q&A document which will be shared over email and also updated onto the website, Harbinger Systems web webinar page website. Okay, so here is the next one. Since there is a possibility that the MVP will fail, isn't it waste of money? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a funny question. I mean, yeah, if if it is, I will tell you when it is a waste of money. Okay. If you're going for an MVP when you don't need it, whether it is a mobile application or whether it is a scenario where the hospitals are going to uh, uh, use your money, right? There, there, that is something that you cannot do in an MVP. Then it definitely it is a waste of money. Okay. Or if you are don't have a cohesive set of features, if you don't have right feedback mechanisms then it is a waste of money. But 
if you follow all the best practices, if you follow the right steps, then MVP is another way of validating your idea. Why do you want to put in hundreds of thousands of dollars and build a product which probably is not aligned to the market, you know? So uh, if you want to fail, like I said, fail quick. Awesome. This is helpful. Okay, the next one. What are some of the marketing techniques that we can use for MVP creation? Oh, uh, in fact, you are better uh, able to understand <laughs> answer this than me. But uh, in my experience, like I said, you should announce whether you are uh, targeting it for an event. You should kind of identify the target users and set right expectations. Okay. Send them emails and then maybe if it is an event, then make somebody stand there and explain the product. You know, uh, even if there is a feedback uh, coming in, you should uh, answer to that feedback. You should uh, look at the user. You should. Uh, kind of make him feel welcome to use uh, your feedback, uh, use your product and give you feedback. All these things, maybe it is not exactly the marketing effort, but that those are the things that I would recommend uh, for an MVP. Definitely. Very right, Prachi. Thanks. Now, here is the next one. Possibly we can take two, one or two more questions. So, the next one is, can you have more than one MVPs? Uh, well, that way, theoretically, you can have as many MVPs. But uh, I would recommend that if it is a startup, an idea, one MVP is what you're looking at. If you, I mean, if, if that MVP fails and if you're going for a different idea, then maybe you have a different MVP. Or okay. if it is a huge enterprise and if you're looking at, so MVP is basically when you are doing something new, want to start with a small version of it and see how people like it. So how many times are you going to do that? Usually it is one. Yes, very right. maximum two if the idea completely fails. True, you know. Great. And the uh, last one which we can take up today is how can you see if your product is minimal? Okay, so um, like I said, or for minimal, but how can you see for a product is minimal? This is the other way of looking at the features. If you can survive without having a certain feature in your product. If you can cut a certain feature okay. without affecting the overall user experience and if you if that feature is still there in your definition then your product is not minimal. Right? So the right way of looking at it is, is my product complete? Can I uh, get away not doing certain features? Okay. Do I have all my essential features and uh, do I have a right differentiator? If all these answers are yes, yes, yes and then there are uh, there are no features which can be removed from your product, you, no, no superfluous features, then your product is minimal. Okay, this is an excellent thumb rule actually. Great, so with this, possibly we should, uh, we will not take up more questions in the best interest of time, we will share it over the email. So, thanks everyone for joining. Today's webinar is being recorded. Thank you, Prachi. And everyone will receive an email with the link to view the recording of the webinar and yes, along with the Q&A document. Thanks, Saru. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us and have a great day ahead. With this, we, we can conclude the webinar today.